I have lived in a small German town called Schwäbisch Hall for the past seven years. I am currently back at my home in the States and I am getting bombarded with reverse culture shock. I am very uncomfortable going in here. Quite shocking to see. This is where Americans come to get groceries. They put it all in one spot. That's none of your business. Why would you ask me that? We made it in. This one, it drives me crazy. This is a pepper, also known as a paprika. How much do you think this costs? 79 cents. How expensive grocery prices are. Se 79 cents. Dollar 50. That's bull crap. Isn't that crazy? Especially healthier food. Basically twice the price of it is in Germany. Fruits and vegetables are way higher priced here, at least in Oregon compared to in Germany. And it's not just fruits and vegetables. Other staples, such as meat, eggs and cheese are more expensive as well. Yeah, everything is very expensive. I was looking it up. Actually, you can compare a lot of the prices. Check out some of these price differentials. There's a cost of living calculator where I compared tons of different items between Germany and Portland, Oregon. Tomatoes, 125.2% more expensive. Apples, 130.2%. Oranges, 134.7% more expensive in Portland, Oregon than in Germany. And you see why a lot of Americans are unhealthy because it is so much cheaper to eat low quality or fast food here in the States. This is often why in the States, poverty and obesity are related just because it is so difficult for people to eat healthily at a reasonable price. And I'm noticing this when we go grocery shopping here. Behind me, we have a marijuana dispensary, a store where you can just go in and, and buy weed. It looks like a regular store, it looks like a coffee shop. Nice on the outside, and these are everywhere. If you are 21 or older in my state of Oregon and a handful of other states, marijuana is totally legal, not just for medical purposes, but for recreational as well. In Germany, marijuana seems to be much more of a tab boo subject, whereas in the States, it's much more open and much more accepted. And it's kind of crazy because this big boom, especially the recreational side of it, kind of happened while I was over in Germany. So to come from a culture where it's a little more hush-hush taboo to a culture in Oregon where it is mainstream, it's all over the place and totally legal is quite shocking. I mean, it's legal, right? It's totally legal. Okay. This one's kind of wild to me. People almost treat politics here like a sport. People will have bumper stickers of their favorite or preferred political candidate, or they'll have signs of their name in their yard or even flags of their favorite political candidates. This is something that you do not see in Germany. I feel like in Germany, people's political leanings are much more private for the most part, or at least are not displayed like a sports team flag. It's like so funny. You'll see, uh, you know, a bumper sticker with a political candidate and then an NFL team. <laughs> it's just like, feels like it's a sport. Kind of wild to see. This one is quite interesting and it is shared by many Americans that I know that went over to Europe and now come back in the States. And also with Laura is that for the first few days of coming back to the States, you feel just a little bit sick. When I started eating American food, I got really sick, my tummy hurt, and then I started to get all bloated and had uh, um, a depression. <laughs> that was from something else. But nonetheless, the food made me sick. So that was my reverse culture shock. Oh, gotta take this. Yep, get over my. It's kind of like this low grade nausea. And it happens to me almost every single time I come back to the States after being in Germany for a prolonged period. And my theory is that my body, having lived in Germany for many months at a time, has gotten used to not having all of these American chemicals and preservatives and stuff in the food. And then when I come back to the States and start eating American food, my body is just shocked at the amount of chemicals and different things that we put in our food and it has like a negative reaction to it. Guys, I've got a bit of a problem. I'm back in the States right now, as you know, and I purchased NFL Game Pass International, but it does not work in the States. It's geo-blocked here. Luckily, I've also got a solution. I just switched my IP address back to Germany and then I could watch no problem. And that is thanks to the sponsor of today's video, CyberGhost VPN. I do the same thing when I'm in Germany and I wanna watch geo-blocked content from the States 
on platforms like HBO or Hulu. Cybergos has 9,000 servers in over 90 different countries, and its 38 million worldwide users have made it the number one most recommended VPN on Trustpilot. A couple pro tips here, the United Kingdom has a great Netflix library. Use CyberGhost to switch your IP address and check it out. Or if you live in Germany, you could actually watch Formula One again for free by switching your IP address to Austria and watching for free on the ORF channel. It works on every major platform. You can also share it with friends and family because one account can be used in up to seven different devices. CyberGhost also helps protect your data by keeping you private and anonymous online. Protecting you both from hackers and those pesky data brokers that wanna get all your information and sell it. They've also got a strict no logs policy, so CyberGhost doesn't even know what you're doing online. If you use the link in my description, you'll get a great deal, 83% off plus four months free. You'll end up paying just over two euros a month. Plus there's a 45 day money back guarantee. Awesome product that I highly recommend. It also helps support me in this YouTube channel if you sign up using the link in the description. So check out CyberGhost VPN. But all right, back to the video. We are going to a high school football game. So exciting. Woo, sunset! <laughs> Do you have the face paint? Having football, my football, American football, be the most popular sport. Obviously in Germany, American football is a smaller sport, more of a niche sport. It is growing, but it is not popular like the way it is here in the States. We went to a high school football game and it was so fun and cool to see just how football centric American culture is. The whole community coming to this high school football game, little kids, the youth teams, all the way up to parents and grandparents and seeing how football is just a very prominent and important part of American culture. I love that, it is so fun. High school sports are great, football is great, and it is very positively shocking for me to be back in that. <laughs> So picture this, is the first couple days that I'm back here in the States, I picked up Laura, we're about to head south on a little road trip. We stop at sort of this drive-through cafe, coffee shop place, and the cashier is so talkative and so friendly and asking, hey, so what are you guys up to today? And I actually froze for a second thinking, that's none of your business, why would you ask me that? Then I kind of realized again, okay, I'm back in the States, this is totally normal to have this small talk, friendly interaction with people. Always like when you're paying by card or something and it takes a couple seconds, there's that kind of little moment, that's when oftentimes people be like, so what are you doing today? It's just your classic American friendliness, but this does not happen in Germany at all. And so I was really shocked when that happened to me to my first couple days back here in the States. Now I'm back used to it again. You guys know I love the uh, pleasant American small talk. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. But when you've been in Germany for a long time and you've gotten used to more German interactions or lack thereof, some cashier that you don't know asking you, what are you up to today? Or what are you up to this weekend? Felt a little invasive at first glance. What you have here is a strip mall, okay? And I know what you're thinking. Not that kind of strip. <laughs> um, strip mall, it's basically a mall where the stores open to the outside. There's a big parking lot here. There's so many strip malls in the United States. Basically, all of our stores and infrastructure is built around strip malls. This is a bunch of stores on the road. It's basically a big old parking lot because everything revolves around the car. Then you've got a bunch of stores lining the outside of the parking lot. I always think about the German Fußgängerzone or pedestrian areas, the shopping areas in Germany, and how much more pedestrian oriented they are compared to the car centric American strip mall. So I mentioned strip malls. We have one of those kind of close to our house. Maybe it's a kilometer away. And Laura and I have been very European. We've been walking down to the strip mall to the coffee shop. And during these walks, we kind of noticed basically how much of an afterthought pedestrians are. Like how long it takes for the light to turn green for the pedestrians compared to the cars. Get a real sense of the car supremacy in the United States. The pedestrian is a second class citizen compared to drivers of cars. It's also interesting that there's certain places on the road where I feel like in Germany, there would be crosswalks here. There's kind of like natural crossings for pedestrians, but at least in the area that I live, there are not crosswalks there. So we always have to jaywalk to get across the street. We just crossed the street, but we had to wait a long time because there's no crosswalks and everything is uh, more made for the cars. This one's pretty sad and it's just the amount of homeless people and, and tents everywhere, especially driving around the city on a lot of different intersections. There are always 
homeless people with signs asking for money there or groups of people or a lot of tents off on the side of the road and kind of like these little tent communities. Uh, it's, it's very sad and it's pretty shocking to see, especially after living in a small German town for so many years where this just does not really exist. How incomprehensibly large the United States is. I really noticed this with driving down to Yosemite with Laura the other week. And we're just driving for hours and hours and hours and barely passing through another state. You know, it took like seven hours to get through my state to the next state. We are moving through Southern Oregon now, soon gonna cross into the Nevada border. If you drive like that in Europe, you're gonna be driving through three different countries with three different cultures and three different languages. Of course, yeah, we've got pretty populated cities, but the space in between there is wild to think about. When we drove down to Yosemite, we went for an hour and a half without seeing another building or a gas station. It actually got kind of scary. We were worried that we were gonna get stranded in the middle of nowhere. All right, guys, that's all for today. I wanna to give a shout out again to the sponsor of today's video, my friends at CyberGhost VPN, an awesome VPN at a great price. If you use the link in the description, you'll get a great deal. It also helps support me and this YouTube channel. So check it out. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you next time.